Patricia Jarman introducing the referee in charge of this bout, Toby Gibson. All right, fans, here we go. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing red trunks, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of Guanabacoa, Cuba. He weighed in at 252 pounds with an unblemished record of 13 wins, no losses, 12 wins by way of knockout. Introducing the undefeated Jorge Luis Gonzalez. And his opponent across the ring. On my left, fighting out of the red corner in this 10 round heavyweight bout. He's wearing white trunks with black trim and fighting out of Houston, Texas. He weighed in tonight at 286 pounds. His record includes 27 victories, 12 losses, and one draw with 19 wins by way of knockout. Introducing Mike, the giant white. Once again, here's your referee in charge, Toby Gibson. Over here, let's go, come on. In there just somewhere, Jimmy? Okay, I want this, I want the Spanish speaker. You know Spanish. Yeah, I want to tell both of them right now. I want this, this to be the cleanest fight. Obey my commands at all times. I want clean boxing and no wrestling. Undo his robe. I want to look the height of his trunk. For the head of uh, Jorge Gonzalez. And, uh, you know, at 6'10 and a half, 280 some pounds, the man looks like he could be playing center for the Lakers or the Clippers or somebody. And in fact, he did play college basketball at Eastern Kentucky. And uh, But what did he like to do when uh, when he played basketball? He wanted, guard. Yeah, I wanted to bring the ball up. You know that from all your basketball games. Isn't that what all the big guys want to do? Uh, they want to take it outside and shoot. He said, I want to do things that people don't expect me to do. That's part of the reason why he's more of a boxer. Now, I'll tell you, Jorge Gonzalez, I guarantee you, he will see something in this fight that he's not yet seen. He'll see a jab in his face constantly, and he's going to see a guy who ties him up better than anybody he has faced. That's White in the white trunks trimmed in black, and Gonzalez in the black trunks trimmed in red. Isn't it always the way? The Shakespearean actor who overhand right that kind of jarred White just a little bit, and uh, Gonzalez has got a good right. Uh, the Shakespearean actor who wants to do stand-up comedy. Uh, the comedian who wants to do Hamlet. It's always the way. And for Mike White, one thing he cannot afford in this bout is to get involved in a slug, slugging contest with Gonzalez. He wants to set the tempo. He's trying to do a boxing jab, keep Gonzalez at bay, not get hit with the overhand right, which he's been hit with, with, hit with once or twice. Let's go box it out here. With the wrestling channel, let's go box. Gibson says uh, we're on here to box men, not wrestle. And I tell you, Mike White does want to hold on a little on the inside. Oh, nice right by Gonzalez. So he's getting that punch in. And he's got a good right hand. Gonzalez is undefeated. 12 of his 13 wins have come via the knockout route. you put to uh, Gonzalez, uh, providing he looks good here tonight, Al, is he, uh, where would you put him, is he a, a guy that, a tune-up for the guy who's going to win a fight for the title or something? Well, I think if he could beat Mike White really convincingly, like Garcia, for instance, knocked Mike White out in two rounds and he's considered something contender, it would vault Gonzalez up, but I think Jorge Gonzalez is still three or four fights away from being a, a top ten heavyweight. He's got to prove, for instance, that he can go away in the fight. Um, I mean, he has never been past eight rounds. And suddenly, White swings to the southpaw style. Both men a bit wary of each other, as uh, you might imagine. And, uh, you get two guys this size. Uh, you approach you and each other with some trepidation. White kind of slapping. Yeah, that's been his. Gonzalez. That's been his problem throughout his career. And, and now, when he fights a much shorter man, he brings his punches up and they have more power. But in this case, he's got to throw him a lot straighter at Gonzalez. And that's making it worse for the slap. 
Gonzalez with a right hand that misses Patrick badly, and that right hand into the ribs, just into the left arm. We're in the first round. It's scheduled for 10. Still to come, of course, the golden boy from Barcelona, Oscar de La Hoya. To the hospital, there he is, and um, we hope it is just a precautionary measure. Ruben, can you tell us anything about that? A absolutely right, Tommy. Exactly what you said. It's all precautionary. They're going to just take him to the hospital for observation. Nothing more than that. Back uh, Felix, of course, was a knockout victim of Jorge Paez in the eighth round of about just concluded. Probably that scene tells you as much as you need to know about some of the changes in boxing. I doubt that that would have happened. Uh, 15 years ago in boxing, they wouldn't have thought of taking him to a hospital to, to take a look at him. He would have just been left to his own devices. Alan, I did a fight one night when a young man from Wales was beaten by Lupi Pintor and died literally in the ring. And um, it was the longest time before they could even get an ambulance there to take the man to California Hospital. What a difference. Well, thank yeah. goodness they have learned. Hopefully. It gets better for the fighters. Gonzalez coming out with an overhand right here in this round. And that is his ticket in this fight. Though we've seen a better left hook from him than, than in the past. This is certainly a better performance by Gonzalez than, than he's had in some others. I think he's in better shape. I think he's listening to his trainers a little bit more. That was a, an area that a lot of concern. But he's in against a man who is not doing much in terms of counterpunch. Mike White, this is not one of his better performances so far. No, and in fact, White switches to the uh, southpaw stance as we look up at these two giants here at Hilton Center. We're at the Las Vegas Hilton Hotel. I'm Tom Kelly along with Al Bernstein. It's a pleasure to have you with us, and I hope wherever you are that uh, you are enjoying our star Center attraction here tonight. Jorge Paez uh, successfully... In, uh, successful in his effort to find a TKO knockout winner over Ramon Felix. Still to come, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya, and of course the unification bout between Carvajal and Gonzalez. The crowd is not really tuned in to the heavyweight display put on here by White and uh, Jorge Gonzalez. As Al Bernstein, uh, sitting next to me at ringside, has said why White is offering the token Mike, resistance and very little offense, while uh, Gonzalez Look at me. being uh, cautioned a uh, moment there by Toby Gibson has really provided most of the action in the fight. Heavyweights have a tendency from time to time to uh, waltz you around for seven or eight rounds, yeah, it's don't a, they? It's a crapshoot with heavyweights, Tom, as you know. You may get two guys with the styles that will make it a good fight, and you may get them together, and it isn't. And in this case, Gonzalez is doing his best to make it a good fight. Part of the problem with White is, I saw him fight Dickie Ryan, a shorter fighter, and it was a pretty interesting fight because when White can come up with his punches, he throws it with some authority. When he has to come down, when he has to come straight ahead against the big fighter, he has a trouble throwing those punches and he slaps, and that's part of the reason why there's been so little good offense from him. He swings to the southpaw style and pays for it. First of all, a left hook and then an overhand right by Gonzalez, both of which scored. These are awfully big men. White is 6'10 and a and half and 280 plus pounds, and Gonzalez, Gonzalez is 6'6, uh, six, six, maybe 6'7 six, and 262 pounds. And the, uh, the worst part of this is, uh, as we go on in this fight, uh, I almost hate to say this, Gonzalez will probably do less offensively because yes. it's been his history, and if he does less offensively, we're really in trouble. Barcelona by way of East L.A., and Ruben Castillo was with him. Let's go back to the dressing room and bring in Ruben. Okay, thank you, Tom. Oscar, you're fighting Jeff Mayweather in a few minutes. 23 wins, two losses. Uh, that's got to be the toughest fight up to this point. What are your thoughts, and how are you going to fight him? Well, I believe it is my toughest uh, fight until this point. And, um, he's got a good record. 23 wins with two losses, two uh, draws, and uh, he's a nice, experienced fighter, and uh, he runs a lot. He, he's a slick boxer, and um, I'm going to just go in and uh, work the body, cut off the ring, and um, kind of get him tired for the later rounds. How do you think he's going to fight you? Um, he'll be moving around, dancing around, using his 
jab a lot, uh, trying to escape, uh, trying to not to get uh, maybe hit a lot, or and um, it's going to be a really good fight. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Let's go back to Tom Kelly. Thank you, Ruben. Um, Oscar De La Hoya. That is not just a, a casual uh, sobriquet, Golden Boy. This is very nice of him. He is a good guy. I was waiting for you to use that word, sobriquet. Well, I did want to disappoint. That's you. your favorite word, and I love it. Yeah, he, he is, is a great kid. He is a Golden Boy. You know, and uh, as you look at the numbers, uh, White doing very poorly in percentage landed. A warning to, <laughs> to Gonzalez, and he, he just can't believe Toby Gibson would dare to warn him about that. Holding behind the head. Oh, and he almost did it again. De La Hoya with a great, uh, great future in boxing, and Jorge Gonzalez knows that his future is now at 28 years of age. He's got to make things happen in the heavyweight division in the next year or so. And you're right, Tom, when you say that Gonzalez really feels that White is just not going to be able to uh, deal, uh, to give him anything power-wise that's going to hurt him so he can walk right in. He's done that um, with some success. He has uh, prompted most of the action. He has uh, hit uh, the better punches, and um, he has dominated this fight such as it is. To get back to De La Hoya, he is, um, and it's an overworked phrase to be sure, he is a true role model. This kid is uh, so first rate, it almost scares you, really. He, uh, his family is with him 100%. He's a clean cut kid, uh, handsome, press agent's dream. He, when you see him in the ring, he's a magnificently schooled fighter for being a young professional, but he had a great amateur career. And when you see him a bit later, he is going to, he's going to please you. Every time you see a couple of guys like this, and I don't mean to denigrate the abilities or talents of either Gonzalez or White. Whoops, that overhand right, and White nearly went to the deck. There's another one. Gonzalez has got him hurt. Gibson is ready to stop it, and there's a left. Down goes White, and I don't think... He's at up at five, six... The referee didn't do in the Michael Dokes Riddick bow fight and why he got in trouble for it. He had plenty of time to take a look at Mike White and decide whether to stop it. And you better be looking at a fighter when you stop the fight. And and Toby Gibson was doing that, and that's why it was an appropriate call for this man, Jorge Gonzalez. A good win for him because of the fact that he was able to get White out of there relatively early. And I, I White did not have one of his better nights as you look at him, and so maybe there are still plenty of questions about Jorge Gonzalez, but when one thing he did show tonight was, and we'll see it here, he showed the ability to throw more than one punch at a time, and he showed the power in the right hand that we know he has. He'll throw an, an, a, a left and an overhand right. And those are awkward combinations, Tom, but at least he was throwing combinations. And he had White in trouble, and then you saw the left hand that came in. Here's another look at it. Um, Gonzalez, uh, with, with disdain for White's ability to defend himself or to answer back, and now he's going to take him on the ropes. There's a solid left and white. Just uh, all six, ten and a half of them sinks to the ropes and down to the canvas. And I second your opinion of the job that Gibson did. Uh, he looked at the man, knew he could not continue, gave him every chance to indicate that he could and wisely stopped this fight. Now, for Gonzalez, I don't know how good he is. Al Bernstein, uh, you're by far and away a, a better fight expert than I would ever imagine to be. 14 and 0 now and 13 knockouts. So, I don't know. How good is Gonzalez? Well, I think he's a guy that's edging toward the top 10 in the heavyweight division, but needs a couple more fights to prove to people that he should be there. He has not faced a puncher yet, for instance. No one that could... A lot of the early fights he had, as you look at the uh, numbers, a lot of the early fights Gonzalez had, Tom, were against guys who were almost cruiserweight types, and White's not a big puncher either, even though he's big. We'll know more about this man when we see him against a guy that can punch. I don't know if he's a great boxer either. He's got to work on that a little bit for my money, but uh, hey, he's a winner here tonight, and that is that. And Jimmy Lennon Jr. has got the uh, official time. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 2 minutes 21 seconds. In round number 4, the referee in charge, Toby Gibson, stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout, he is still undefeated, Jorge Luis Gonzalez. Nice win for Gonzalez.
no question about it, the Cuban expatriate. Every win is a win, and a win is a win. It's a nice thing to have. And there is White uh, out of the ring and headed for the dressing room. Hey, boy, what a following he's got. If that isn't built-in box office and a press agent's dream for a Southern California Los Angelino. Nothing else is. When well, he made it all possible when he won the Olympics, uh, the gold medal in the Olympics, and of course, uh, it's been overworked perhaps, but clearly he dedicated that Olympic gold medal to his mother, Cecilia, who died of breast cancer at the age of 38, while Oscar was preparing for the, getting ready to, to fight in the trials in the box office to go to the Olympics. And that win and the story surrounding it uh, and his ability has made him quite the figure. Meantime, Jeff Mayweather waits in the ring for the young man that he says he's going to take to school. Going to welcome to the ranks of the professionals. And one thing about Jeff Mayweather is he looks at this scene, he's not the kind of guy that loses his cool. He's an articulate young man, a college graduate uh, in graphic design, very, a very cool customer. And so that part of it won't bother him. De La Hoya is uh, just about 5 feet 11. Mayweather is 5, 7 and a half. These are a couple of big guys. That is tall. Lightweight. Jeff Mayweather in the tail of the tape. Mayweather is eight years older. He is, uh, well, let's call it three and a half inches shorter. He's a pound heavier, has two inches pulled in the weight uh, in the reach department, and uh, he has been around in the ranks of the professionals. The rules uh, for Nevada, 10-point must system. We're going eight rounds. Three knockdown rule, no standing eight count. Saved by the bell only in the last round, and only the referee can stop the fight. Billy Graham, Cindy Barton, and Patricia Jarman are the assigned judges. And the man in the middle of the ring to introduce the two fighters for this one, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout coming your way is a lightweight special attraction scheduled for eight rounds of boxing. At this time, I present to you the judges at ringside for this bout. Bill Graham, Cindy Barton, and Patricia Jarman. Introducing the referee in charge, we have Mitch Halpern. All right, fans, here we go. Introducing to you first on my right. He is fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with white trim. He is from the talented and well-known boxing family fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada. He weighed in at the lightweight of an even 135 pounds with a record of 23 wins, two losses, and two draws. He has six wins by way of knockout. Introducing Jen.